Today on The Naked Garden, we're looking at how to make compost tea. This is not compost extract, but compost tea, and then apply it to your foliar, which means your leaves of your trees, your plants, your vegetables, your fruits, to be able to prevent diseases and to help it help in strength. Come join me. Welcome to The Naked Garden, I'm Paul Holofko. Today we're doing compost tea, basic equipment and a general purpose recipe for using as a foliar spray to prevent diseases and problems and to encourage a, a long health for your plants. Compost tea is different than compost extract in a way that compost tea is brewed or the actual organisms that are removed from your compost are actually propagated several generations inside your tea. So what you need to do is you need to have the highest diversity of bacteria, fungus, and protozoa in your, in your compost to start with. And the way you check that is through a microscope. So if you haven't investigated into in buying a microscope, I highly recommend you do because then you can see exactly what is actually being propagated, what is actually being created as your tea, and then you'll have a better control over the things that are in your yard. What you need to do is you need to make your own compost that actually has a lot of diversity of bacteria, protozoa, and, nemat and, and fungus. Nematodes is a different story. Nematodes have to really be added afterwards to your tea to be able to uh, apply to where you need it. So a lot of it is by experimentation and by playing with this. By the way, this takes a lot of uh, uh, patience and a lot of, of practice. Um, you can actually make any type of compost tea that you want. So you can make a high bacterial one, you can make a high fungus one or protus one, depending on what plants you're trying to grow or what kind of problem you have. But in, just, in this case, we're just going to be making a general purpose overall so that you can actually practice and you have some place to start with um, uh, trying to experiment with this. Now the equipment is, I get, I mean, all this came from a hardware store. You don't have to buy special equipment for this. All this came from the hardware store. This came from a, um, um, a, a, a booze so store. It's basically milliliters, ounces, tablespoons, shot glass. The aquarium uh, heater came from the local pet store. Uh, the bag came from the hydroponic. The food generally comes from the kitchen, your kitchen, yes, your kitchen, or it comes from a hydroponic store, which they have spe special things that you can get like kelp and fish hydrogenate and things like that. And what I have here are two buckets. And these are five gallon, um, I think these are joint compound buckets. I got this, uh, basically we did some drywall and, and I just used the buckets and I use it for my compost tea. Now the trick is, is to clean these things as if you would eat off of them yourself. So in other words, you have to, here, I fill this up here with water. Let me dump the water out, okay? And you can actually see inside of here that the, the, the it is actually clean enough that you can actually eat off. Why you want that is you want, uh, you want only your, anaero your aerobic bacteria to grow. Now there's two different type of two different type of states when it comes to oxygen. We want the aerobic bacteria, which basically uses and digests and respirates oxygen. So what you do is you have a bucket and you uh, have to keep it clean so that you don't have anaerobic. Now, any anaerobic bacteria in there. If you keep your bucket like from one tea to the next, you have to clean it and use hydrogen peroxide. So what I do is I go to a, I go to a um, hydroponic store and get a hydrogen peroxide. This is a 30% hydrogen peroxide. It's about 20 bucks for this whole bottle here. You only use a couple drops of it. And the reason I do that is it sure beats the one or 2% hydrogen peroxide. So I guarantee you this probably will bleach your hair in 15 seconds if you put it on there, but it sure does work well. You only put a couple drops of it. Hydrogen peroxide will then kill all the uh, bacteria, protozoa, nematodes, everything in your, in your bucket when you apply a couple drops. So you put water in here to store it and then you put a couple drops of hydrogen peroxide in there and keep it clean. So that's basically it. The other thing I do is I have two aquarium heaters 
one for each bucket of course. And this is a 100 watt aquarium heater. And what I do with this is I heat up my uh, uh, water to about uh, 70 degrees. In this case, I'm gonna be doing 70 degrees of, um, for this temperature because it's 70 degrees right now. So I wanna match my compost tea to what I'm going to be spreading my compost tea on. So the way I do that is then just put it in there and let it go. You have to keep oxygen in your, in your, in your um, water while your tea is being brewed. And the way you do that is with this particular pump right here. This is a 500 gallon fish pump or a large aquarium pump, 500 gallon aquarium pump. And I'm running both of these at the same time. And I have a couple processes and apparatus here. What I do here is I have a, let's see, this one might be easier to show it on. What I have here is I have from the hose, from the pump itself, the air pump, it goes in through here, it goes into a valve that I can basically adjust to see how much air I want to go in there. It goes into a half inch PVC pipe. This has all been cleaned with hydrogen peroxide and is stored with hydrogen peroxide, a dilute hydrogen peroxide with water. It goes into a half inch, half inch joint and then another pipe that's cut off at the end. The way this thing works is you put the water in here and let's just go ahead and do that. Okay. So I had, the hydrogen, I had the hydrogen peroxide already in here and I saved it. So what I want to do here is I want to fill the bucket up. Okay, so I filled the bucket up and I put the heater in there. This is about, I set this at 70 degrees. It's, this, uh, the hose has been out in the sun for a while. So it's actually warmed up. It's probably very close to that. It's not turning on, so it's probably close to it. The other thing that I do is I put in a lid and I make a lid. This, remember, is a five gallon bucket for drywall. And I buy this lid uh, from the local hardware store and then I cut a hole in the middle. The reason for it is when we, when we run this thing, we run this thing, water will, will pop up off the side because we put the hose in there. And let's see, let's put the air hose. We take this and we put the air hose in there. All right, and then we turn on the pump. Now what happens is since the, since the air is coming up, you have to, a lot of it is you have to keep no air stone or anything. You just have it a hole right there. This is a, a single hole that just comes right out from the, from, the, from the pump and then it just circulates the water, the air into the water. And I generally have it on the edge of a, edge of the bucket. And the reason I want the edge of the bucket is I want it to turn all the compost as in a big giant circle. So all the compost tea when it's in here. So I put it in here, bat that down and you're all set. Okay. So that's how you put it together. And that's the equipment that goes with it. And of course I can adjust how much I have here. There are three ways. There are three, really three ways that you can, uh, Put the microbiology in your compost tea maker all right and one of them is to use a bag where you take the compost put it in there put it in the water and then dilute it and just ag agitate it and then you get all the all the microorganisms and the microbiology out of the out of the bag and into the water Another one is you can take it, leave it in there, the bubbler right underneath it, and you leave it in there for about eight, 10 hours, and then you take it out, and the actual agitation of the, of the, um, the, the bubbles onto the bag will then separate the microbiology and, and diffuse it into the water. A third way to do it is you just put the compost directly in there, and it sits on the bottom, and you have everything rotate around, and you have the, the the organic material in there, as well as the microbiology. The only disadvantage of doing that is that uh, you have to filter the whole business out after end. In this way, when you use the bag with the bubbler or you just agitate it, uh, you really don't have to filter it when you go into applying it as compost tea through your compost tea applicator, which obviously has to be tested to see if it is uh, not killing microbiology. Remember, your compost tea applicator has to be built in such a way, generally a peristolic pump or a vein pump or um, anything but a rotary blender pump uh, can be used, um, a diaphragm pump, 
to not squeeze or destroy the actual microbiology in order to be able to get it through the hose and then out in, onto the leaves. I mean, dead biology is not going to do us any good if your pump and your applicator is killing it all. So let's go ahead and get some compost and let's, try, let's do some agitation. So what I do is I put the compost into the bag and then take the bag and then uh, roll it up. So the compost is down in here, okay? Compost is down in here and the bag is then rolled up, close it, okay? Take all my equipment off here, okay? Take the pump out and all this, okay? And I put it into the compost. Helps to dump some of it out, okay? And I just agitate it. Now what will happen is I'll agitate it and I'm waiting for it to be right out cho uh, brown, chocolate brown. That means 70% dark chocolate. You see, if I make it go black, which I can't really make it go black because this compost wasn't designed or wasn't grown in a way to make it go black, it'll be only dark brown. I just have to make sure that I get a high enough concentration out of the back of the of the microorganisms to make my time worthwhile of composting. Okay, so I want the water to be right out dark brown like 70% chocolate, which is nice. Now what's interesting is when I take the bag out and I squeeze all the juices out. Okay, none of this smells, by the way. This is finished compost that I have actually observed underneath a microscope to make sure that I have amoebas and rotifers and all these bacteria in. If you take a look at this, you can actually see that half of the material is gone. So the only thing that's really left is the organic material and the microbiology uh, has come through the bag. It's actually quite amazing. So what we do here is, you can see in here, we have the compost tea and it's dark, dark brown. Now let's put the whole thing together. So we put the heater in there. All right. We put the pump. All right. And for the sake of noise, I'm not going to turn the pump on at this time because I got to talk about this still. Like I said, this is a general purpose compost recipe. So we're going to be say at 70 degrees. That's the that's what the thermometer is set at. And I trust the thermometer enough because I've had thermometers in here. I mean, I trust the heater enough that it'll keep it at 70 degrees. I've had enough thermometers in here. No, it is 70 degrees because I make this. So I make this stuff basically every single week. So what I need to do is I want to put in food for bacteria. I want to put food in there for protozoa and I'll put food in there for fungus. All right, so let's go over to the different types of foods here and how much we got put of each one. All right, now this right here, here, all right, is fish hydrogenate, and this is another form of fish hydrogenate from another company. I have fish kelp, all right, fish kelp, which is basically, not fish kelp, what the hell is that? Uh, it's not fish kelp, it's actually blended kelp or liquefied kelp. So it smells like the ocean. It's basically seaweed, it's blended like, this is ultimate seaweed blended into, into a, a black liquid. And then I have two canisters of humus concentrate. Okay, so I only need one canister of this. And basically this is the leonardized stuff. This is what we use for leonardized to be able to take out the the uh, the chloramine and chlorine and everything else that we don't want in there. So this is really your compost, should I say your compost extract in dry form. But since I actually make my own compost itself, everything is wet here. All my microbiology is going right now, is breathing, it's living, it's propagating in here. All we have to do is put the foods in here, 
to be able to have it live for another 72 hours or however long we're going to keep. In fact, actually this recipe requires to be 48 hours and today is Monday and then when it comes to Wednesday morning we'll be able to take it out and take a look at the microbiology and you'll see a lot of different animals in there. And we'll take a look at that underneath the microscope. What I highly recommend that you have, if you're very serious about making compost teas and you don't want this thing ever to go anaerobic or no oxygen, you have to get one of these miserable things. And I call it a miserable thing, it's an oxygen sensor. Here is the actual oxygen probe. It has a small membrane on there and you have to put some oil inside there. It's actually a pain in the butt to use. And you have several, several uh, controls on here. So when you do turn it on, you have to reset it and then monitor the amount of oxygen. You have to reset it, kind of let it warm up in order for it to work. What you do is you do it in the air. Now, air itself, this is the oxygen content in air itself, is roughly about 20.9%. The rest of it is nitrogen and other gases and small things like uh, inert gases, helium, neon, argon, things like that. Methane, whatever else you want. So what we do is we want to monitor it so that we have enough oxygen in our so uh, water-soluble uh, container here. So in other words, oxygen that is in the air is the same, it's a similar percentage, it's a little bit higher in water, depending on the temperature of the water too. If the lower the temperature of the water, the higher the oxygen content. The lower, the higher the temperature of the water, then the less the oxygen. And fish know that all the time. That's how fish can breathe in the water through their gills. They breathe the same amount of oxygen the same way we breathe in oxygen and nitrogen. We just don't know the nitrogen part. Okay, so what I'm doing here is re trying to reset this thing. And it seems to be pretty much stabilized at 20.8, 20.9, depending on what it is. And I put the oxygen sensor inside the bucket. Okay, the, 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 the water is at 72 degrees. I can see that. And when this thing is working right, And the oxygen is right now at 19, okay? So it's going a little bit down. A lot of it's because the microbiology is in here and they're respirating. So we have a, a little bit smaller oxygen content. There's a way in this meter to keep it so that you can see the high and low as time goes on because it'll change. The more food you put in here, the faster the populations will grow and then the faster the oxygen is removed. So you want to put a little bit of food and just take a longer time to brew it than you want to have it all brew at one time and then there's no oxygen there and anything goes anaerobic, you can't use it anyway. So that's part of what uh, goes on here, okay? So that's part of the oxygen sensor and you can keep it in there if you want or you can check it every so often, but uh, I generally just leave it out and uh, check it. Well, I've, like I said, I've made this so many times before that uh, I know pretty much what the recipe will do and, and how it will work, okay? All right, so what we want to do is, in this particular recipe for a um, four gallon tank, all right, I'm going to put in one and a half ounces of humus, which is this kind of stuff here. This is the one that I got at the hydroponic store and I wanted to use this um, as part of the humus that added to the entire business here to make sure there's a good diversity. So I'll just take my measuring cup here and this is one and a half ounces. So my, where's my ounces here? One and a half ounces is like right. Oh wow, right here. Okay. That's one and a half ounce right there. So we dump that in. That's of the humic humus concentrate. That's a lot, actually, if you ask me. All right, then we put in two tablespoons of, and the tablespoons in here. That's the one thing that's nice about this. You can um, just use this as water. Tablespoons, uh, two tablespoons of kelp. And that's what this stuff is. This is actually um, liquefied kelp. And what you do is you pour it in here and you just put in two tablespoons of that. And I probably put a little bit too much in there, so we're gonna go a little bit interesting there, okay? And compost, warm kelp, and 
we have to put in fish hydrogenate. Now, there is a difference between this fish hydrogenate. This is, okay, what is fish hydrogenate? All right. What fish hydrogenate is you take a fish, get a blender, put some water in the blender, and put the fish in their hole, and you just blend the crap out of it. What happens is the oils on there are the food for fungus. Like, for instance, I just put in a bunch of humic acid, which is the humic concentrate, which is the bacteria. Yeah, I wanted a high bacteria to concentrate because I happen to know this product's pretty good. Then I put in the kelp, which is the food for the protozoa. And now I'm going to put in the food in for the fungus. And so if you have, like, say, this one right here, which is the vital one right here, there's a gallon jug, okay, this is like $16. This one's around $16 as well, but it's too, they're, they're, but they're, they're different in ways that this is more concentrated and it has the oils in there in a more concentrated form. So there's less of this stuff goes farther than the same amount of stuff of here. So I buy this for the fish, uh, for extracting for lawns and for gardens. When I actually do compost extract and add this with it, I put like maybe a half a cup, three quarters of a cup per five gallons. This over here, I'm going to be putting in, according to my recipe, uh, 15 milliliters, which then in this case right here, uh, it's only up to here, which is, you don't put much here in at all, okay? And that's 15 milliliters, and that's it. Whew, that really stinks. Okay, that's it. Now, you might think we're not putting much in here, but you know, in reality, think about, you know, you just, this is the compost extract with all the materials and foods for the animals. But, you know, it's water diluted. You evaporate all the water, you only get a thin layer in the bottom. So if you're putting a lot of, a lot of food in there, you'll overpopulate. And really, the food to bacteria ratio will be so high that it won't be really practical. So that's it. Now what you do is you let it run. Plug it in. Plug this in. And you let this thing run for about 48 hours. And of course, tomorrow I'll check the microbiology by simply taking a sample out of here and checking it and seeing how good it is or how bad it is or where it's at or how anaerobic or whatever it is. So I also, also put in the oxygen sensor, which is going here. And these oxygen sensors are very finicky. And it's still around 19. I took uh, some sample of this and looked underneath the microscope, and here's the results. You can actually see there's quite a bit of protozoa. There's small little animals all running around all over the place. There is nematode, no, there's protozoa, there's bacteria, and the fungus. And you can see these small little areas, like they like, look like little bamboos. They're kind of like uh, a little bit almost red-brown color. Well, in this case, it's a black and white image here. But it's a, a long, looking like a bamboo. That's actually fungus, and it was attached to a small ball. That ball is the actual spores of the fungus itself. So you start germinating fungus and then start increasing your fungus. So what the idea here is to take the compost tea once it's been made and distribute it on leaves to be able to fill the portals on the leaves so that pathogens, pathogenic type of uh, bacteria, fungus, and protozoa don't come in to invest and to invade. So we're filling up all the portals on all the cells of the leaves of both sides. All right, once you're done with this, and you've squared everything you're gonna squirt here with any type of tools or anything, you have to clean it. The idea is that this is a clear tube, so algae will grow in here in no time. So you need to really clean this thing. So the way you do it is you can actually dump everything out. I turn it off for a second here. Dump whatever remaining tea that you have left over, and you need to clean and rinse everything. You also need to sterilize it. And the way you sterilize it is by using hydrogen peroxide. So what I do is I clean this, rinse this out, and a lot of it is rinsing. The trick is it has to be so clean that you can eat off of it. If you feel like you can eat off of it, don't use soap. If you feel like you can eat off of it, then it's clean enough. Remember, it is bacteria, things that grow in the yard. And what I do here 
is I just let the pump run with the water. So I put water in the bucket and then just let the pump run to make sure that it shoots out all the, all the water that's in there. And just let that thing run. In the meantime, the hydrogen peroxide, all right, this is cleaned out. Put it back in here. Let it run in a circle for a while. Put a little hydrogen. This is a dab of hydrogen peroxide. This is 30% hydrogen peroxide. It's not the wimpy stuff that you get in the pharmacy. That's a 2%, this is a 30%. So it, you only need a couple drops for it. Put it in there, let it run for a couple minutes. And this is how you store it. So you store it like this with the water in it. And you just, of course, turn off the pump and you're done. So it's clean enough that you can actually eat, eat off of it. The next thing you gotta do is you gotta clean your buckets. Now my buckets ended up having a lot of sludge at the bottom. Now this is the sludge right here. This is a lot of the material on the bottom is the leftovers from making the compost tea. It can also be stones, dirt. It can also be some of the food that didn't get eaten, things like that. This is good stuff to, to put on plants. You just put it on any plant anywhere. It won't hurt it. You just need to clean the entire bucket. What I do do is I use a scrub thing like this. This is a pad and I dedicate it only to using it for compost tea. I don't put soap in it with it or anything like that. So what I do is just rinse this out. All right, so rinse it out and clean it out. The other thing that you need to clean is also the pipe. This is the pipe that goes, this is the pipe that goes to the air pump, air pump and this also has to be cleaned. You gotta clean the lids. Here's a lid, so a lid got, here's a lid that got really, really messy. So you gotta clean that too. We mustn't forget the heaters. We have to clean those too. A lot of bacteria and things sit in this area right here and they have to be cleaned out. So a lot of times what I do is I'll sit there and scrub this to get the majority of the uh, gunk off of it. And then I'll just let this thing soak in hydrogen peroxide uh, when I fill the bucket up. So, so when I'm satisfied that the heaters are clean here, I fill the bucket up and then I leave them in there. So what I do is put a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in there with it. Just a dab like that. And that stays sterilized and that's how I actually save it and keep it from, from the next time I need to use the tea. So put the lid back on there and this is taken off to the side. I do keep the water in there to keep things clean. Well, thank you for watching The Naked Garden. I hope you learned something about making compost tea. It's a little bit of a tedious job, but it's actually well worth it and it's very, very rewarding. So have a great day.